Hello, welcome once again to our series, our Geocam series on sequence stratigraphic principles. So in this uh, module, we'll look at um, the accommodation space as a term, and then the concept of eustacy, uh, and then we'll go ahead to uh, identify, uh, you know, a few ways to figure out changes or possible evidences of change in sea level from um, available data. Accommodation space uh, here refers to the amount of area or opening available to be occupied by both sediments and water. And that depends on um, the, the depth you know, between the bottom of the sea, that's the seabed, and the sea surface. So the section below kind of shows everything together. So we have the seabed, uh, which is actually the same as the sediment water interface. And the sea surface, which is also called the base level, uh, and that separation between the both of them is called water depths. And then there's this concept of local uh, datum also shown on this um, figure uh, on the on the bottom bottom interface, one of the bottom interfaces there, which kind of separates the whole sediment um, you know um, interval from the underlying basement. So to note again, uh, one thing to note again is that the base level actually refers to the lowest level um, or the lowest elevation to which um, all the water bodies from the terrestrial or uphill areas can flow to. Now let's talk a little bit about eustacy and uh, eustatic sea level change. Now um, eustacy or eustatic sea level change refers to a global change in sea level. Uh, so whatever, whenever you have a, uh, a change or any uh, the occurrence of any, um, you know, events that globally impacts the volume of ocean water or the geometry of ocean basins um, at such scale, then we say that such a change is is eustatic. Another very important term um, that that is used in sequence stratigraphic uh, study is uh, is relative sea level. So here we're we're seeing. The relative sea level refers to the, you know, the distance between the local um, datum, which I showed on the previous slide, and the sea surface. So, if you sum up the sediment mass and the water depth, uh, that that kind of that summation actually gives you what we call the relative um, sea level, and that can vary from one place to the other, as I will show on the next slide. Yeah, so this slide is actually putting it all together: um, the water depth, the relative sea level, the local datum. Um, the sea level or the base level and also the sediment mass but one very important thing again to note here is uh, if you focus on the local datum for example uh, where you have the um, arrows we see that the local datum can actually uh, it varies from one place to the other and um, in this concept in this case we're seeing um, uplifts and uh, subsidence uh, which kind of you know varies from one basin to the other can actually uh, be very key contributors to the elevation of the local uh, datum. All right, so a bit of uh, small um, analog here, which is still on the concept of UCC, which we have called it the plastic cup of beverage, right? So imagine a plastic cup uh, filled with um, a beverage, uh, I'm sure some of us like that. So here yeah, we're saying the size of the cup actually uh, is can can actually uh, you know be the same as the volume of the ocean basin. Uh, the volume of the uh, beverage in the cup is analogous to the volume of water in the ocean, and then the surface of the beverage is actually the sea or the base level. So imagine that we have a, a refill case. Uh, in which case we were saying the refill case will be every global change that increases the volume of ocean water, which in this case is actually the different process that can increase the volume of beverage in this plastic cup. So it's either because the volume of water has increased because more water or more beverage has been added or the container has changed its volume. So here the refill case will be, uh, examples will be, uh, well, example of such such uh, processes will be glacial basinal or ice melting, uh, water inflow from terrestrial sources, 
uh, tectonic changes which can lead to uplift uh, storm surge and you know increase water runoff these are all processes that can actually either change the volume of the container or increase the volume of um, ocean water well in this case the volume of the beverage in the cup right now the drink case will be um, again the flip side of it where we could have changes in the ocean current circulation uh, tectonic sag you know ocean water expansion or evaporation increased seepages and all you know all the other processes so the idea is these are all processes that could lead to either change in the volume of water um, or volume of beverage in the cup or a change in the volume of the or the size of the container or in this case the size of the cup okay all right so let's let's talk a little more on um, how to identify or rather indicators of sea level changes from data so i'll start from outcrop so when on an outcrop uh, one thing to look out for is uh, any um, you know evidence of a rapid or an abrupt uh, shift in in fascias. So if we have a basin one shift in fascias, uh, which is also called deepening of the fascias, or an, a rapid uh, you know landward shift, which is also called the shallowing, uh, then we we can make a case for um, a sea level change for that um, outcrop section across that interface where you have that change. Right. So, for example, if you have, um, you know, shore phase or upper shore phase fascists, for example, which typically are from beach or, you know, barriera environments, if you have them being overlain by deep offshore mods across that interface, um, it's a shift in fascists. And we can say, OK, the sea level has gone from more, uh, you know, landward fishes, which are the shore phase to more basinal fishes, which are the offshore mods. So that's like a deepening upwards or basin one shift in fascists and the flip side of it is when you have an offshore mod uh, or offshore marine fascists uh, overlain by fluvial or maybe lagunal deposits that means you have more distal or more basinal fascists sitting below or being overlain by um, less basinal fascists in which case you have you say that they you have a landward um, shift in fascists so either way Across that interface where you have a difference in the environment of the position, we, we can say that you have a, a sea level um, change. Now, this is just uh, trying to put it together and show an example from a, a well log. So here we have shore phase sands, which have been designated as A, and then an offshore mod, which is B. So across the first um, uh, interface, if you're going from B, as the offshore mode to A, which is shore face sand above it, we we'll see that we have gone more landward. So, of course, we have gone from offshore to less, from more offshore, which is B, to less offshore. So, that's like a landward shift in fascist or shallowing upwards uh, of, the, of the fascist environment, right? And the flip side of it will be going from the shore face um, unit below to offshore um, unit above it, in which case we have moved more basin wards even though we're looking at the vertical section from the well. So this whole idea is taken from, uh, let's say, uh, this this um, section on the right, which shows the you know genetic biofascist profile, gives us a, a better view of the different um, uh, bathymetries and their water depths. And that is part of what is used to you know decide whether we're going more landward or more basinward, because we're looking at the depths, uh, not just the, the rock type, but also the the water depth that that rock type had come from. All right, so when we have, in the, like in the first case, when you have um, a sea level rise, we say there's a marine transgression. So, and when that happens, uh, that means that the shoreline has moved uh, landward, uh, in which case, when that happens, the open the shelf, or rather, the open shelf is covered by more uh, sea water, or rather, it's more covered um, by sea water. And uh, that means that we are looking at uh, the position of more basinal or deeper water fascists, which are typically from middle neuritic to outer neuritic environments, um, water depths, uh, and that's 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 indicative of you know storm wave based conditions. Um, in the on the flip side of it, when the sea level falls, that's that's uh, that means we have a marine regression. Uh, when that happens, um, we're saying that the shoreline has moved. Um, further basin wall that's away from the land onto the sea right and when that happens the shelf is sometimes exposed giving room for the position of more 
shallow water um you know fascists which like in this case could be from in in an erotic um water depths and the typical of fair weather with base uh, conditions right so the key overall message here is um vertical stratigraphic sequences or sequence depicts uh marine transgressions um, and regressions uh, so this is uh, again same uh, exercise of trying to figure out uh, in uh, you know interfaces where you have um, sea level change or possibly in the case of sea level change in this case we're looking at an outcrop example so here uh, across this uh, this um, erosional surface which uh, in this case is a sequence boundary uh, we have above it we have a more proximal or rather i'll call it more landward fascist sitting right above um less landward fascist or rather more you know basin of fishes so across this interval there's a sharp change in the environment uh, of the position or the bathymetry of these different um, units so we now say across this interface that there's been a change or a shift in um, sea level which in this case we've gone from more distal to less distal so across it we have like a shallowing upwards um um uh, or a um, yeah shallowing upward, upward um, movement or movement of the shoreline all right so the other uh, source of um, information for sea level change is also biostratigraphy so here we look at intervals where you have um you know significant contrast in in the diversity and abundance of the biostratigraphic data like you know planktons and forearms um you know alike so when you are looking at the biostratigraphic section and um, at a particular depth we see a difference across that depth above and below it in not just the diversity but also the abundance it tells us that there's been a significant shift in the you know uh, sea level and that is because each sea level has its own conditions and the, each this these organisms have specific conditions that they can actually exist and thrive very well so when we have a sharp change certain organisms uh, the organisms that could not survive in one particular condition will not be present why the ones that could survive in that uh, conditions can be will be present and then it tells us a lot about okay um what the conditions in terms of bathymetry in terms of water uh, in terms of water depth uh, in terms of maybe presence or absence of oxygen or so um, tells us a lot about those conditions and we can make those calls by looking at this um, biostratigraphic data and then there are some index foods that are actually indicative of certain conditions where you have maybe where you have lots of um, maybe where you have dominance of deep marine conditions there are some index forces that tell you a lot about that and this these are all indicators of um you know sea level changes right so thanks that's all i have uh, for this um um episode uh, in the next uh, discussion we'll be looking at correlative conformities uh conformable successions and uh, shoreline movements okay right so until then thank you for listening uh do let me know if you have questions and uh, you can also drop your comments in our youtube and facebook page thank you